God created it by hand From mighty mountains to the raging sea To every leaf on every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look In the town of Bethany, there was a lot of celebrating. But not everyone had heard the wonderful, miraculous news. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me. What's going on? Haven't you heard? A good friend of ours has died. Really? Then why is everyone so happy? Because he has come back to life. That's impossible. That would... <laughs> would be a miracle. I'd sooner believe that my donkey talks. Who is this man? No ordinary man, that's for sure. His name is Jesus, and he's the Son of God. We don't blame you for not believing us. We'd think the same thing if we didn't know Jesus and hadn't seen the miracles ourselves. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm Peter. And I'm Andrew. Come, sit with us. Andrew introduced Jesus to me. I liked him the very first time I met him. Peter told the traveler that a few days after meeting Jesus, they were all invited to a wedding. Even Jesus' mother Mary was there. Halfway through the party, the groom saw that the wine was almost gone. Without wine, there wouldn't be anything to drink, and the party might end early. They have no wine. Is there anything you can do to help? But it's not time to let people know who I am. Okay. Do whatever he tells you to do. Go and fill six empty jars with water. Then pour the water for all the wedding guests. I don't believe it! This is the best wine I've ever tasted! Huh? The groom didn't know where the wine came from. But Andrew and Peter knew. It was Jesus' first miracle. Hmm. That could have been some trick, don't you think? No, it definitely wasn't a trick. We saw it with our own eyes. And that was just the beginning of his miracles. Like the time we were about to fish. Peter explained how Jesus was teaching a large group of people about the kingdom of God. Hello again. Please, no pushing. May I join you? Of course. Let's go out into the water. Jesus spoke to the crowd on shore for a little while longer, then said, Peter, sail out into deeper water and let's fish. 
<laughs> but Jesus, we fished all night and caught nothing. Maybe so. But now, put your nets into the water and see what you catch. Anything you say, Jesus. Our nets are about to break! <laughs> We're going to need another boat! <laughs> This is fantastic! We have so many fish, we're going to sink! Peter? Andrew? It's time to stop fishing now. What? Come with me, and I'll teach you how to be fishers of men. So Andrew and Peter quit their jobs. They stopped fishing so they could be with Jesus and learn from him. After that, they met James and John, who also joined Jesus. They became Jesus' closest friends and followed him wherever he went to teach people. We were the first of his followers, his disciples. This is James and John. So the boatload of fish was another miracle. That's well, right. Yes, right. I don't know. Maybe Jesus had a knack for fishing. I'm a pretty good fisherman myself, you know. Oh, that was just the beginning. There were so many other miracles. Oh, uh, this is Philip and Thomas. There was the time Jesus was teaching inside a friend's house. James told how the house was packed with people who had come to hear Jesus. We'll never get close enough for him to help our sick friend. Hmm, maybe there's more than one way to get inside. So remember, with faith, you can do anything. What are they doing? Away. Go away, do you hear? No, wait. Don't you see how hard they work to get their sick friend inside the house? What's going to happen? All of the bad things you have done in your life no longer matter. I forgive you of your sins. What? Jesus can't forgive this man. Everyone knows that only God can forgive someone who is bad. Who does he think he is? When I say I forgive your sins, there's no way of proving that I've really done anything. True, true. But you will see my power if I heal this man's body, too. Time to get up and walk home. Glory to God! This really is His Son! If Jesus can cure a sick man, then it's true that He can forgive sins too! Look! Jesus has healed me! And then the man and his four friends shouted for joy and sang all the way home. That sounds like a miracle. But maybe the man wasn't really sick and he just tricked Jesus. What's this? Someone who doesn't believe Jesus' miracles? He thinks they're just tricks. A minute ago, you said you were a pretty good fisherman. Once I caught a camel fish this big. But have you ever been able to make a storm go away? <laughs> no one can do that.
there was the time when all of us were sailing across a lake. I'm tired and need to rest a little while. have more faith. There's no reason to be frightened when I'm with you. It's a miracle. Even the wind and water obey him. I... I don't know what to say. I hardly believe my ears. If only I could see such miracles with my own eyes. I've seen them with my eyes I've seen my friend named Jesus Turn water into wine Seeing is believing Believe in what I see When you look within your heart You'll see what I mean I can almost see the miracles Right before my eyes He fills the nets of fishermen Turns water into wine he feeds the hungry, cures the lame, gives sight to the blind. When I look within my heart, miracles come alive. I believe in miracles. I believe in Jesus. I believe in miracles. The power of God is with us. my doubts far away If only I had seen with my own eyes Sometimes my brother you've got to have faith There is a man in Israel He's doing wondrous things They say he is the Son of God Jesus is his name I believe I believe in Jesus, I believe in miracles, the power of God is with us. The disciples then told about the day when Jesus was stopped by two blind men. 
Jesus, please, please heal us. Do you really think I can make you see again? Oh, yes. We've heard all about you. You are the true Son of God. We know you can make us see again. Then what you believe can happen, will happen. Just keep on believing. First, we could only see darkness. Now we can see the light of the world. Oh, what a miracle that must have been. Please, don't stop there. The disciples then explained the more people learned about Jesus, the more they hungered for his teachings. Like the day in Galilee, when he spoke to a crowd of 5,000 people. It was a wonderful day. Almost like a big surprise picnic. Can't everyone go home now so they can get something to eat? But Peter, there is so much more I want to tell them. Philip, where can we buy enough food for all these people? It would take eight months of work to pay for all the food for a crowd this size. Jesus, I found a boy who has five loaves of bread and two fish. The boy gladly gave Jesus his food. After blessing the food, Jesus gave it to his disciples to hand out. It was just a little bit of food, but it filled every basket they had and kept filling them. And after everyone had eaten, they collected the leftovers and found that there was enough to still fill every basket. Jesus had performed another miracle but the day wasn't over yet. Right after the wonderful picnic, Jesus sent his disciples back across the lake. Don't be afraid. I'm coming to help you. Jesus, is it all right for me to come out to you? Come ahead, Peter. Oh, my. Oh, he's actually good. Walk on water? Uh, help me! Jesus, help me! Uh. Why did you doubt me, Peter? Oh, oh look, 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 look! Truly, you are the Son of God. Why did you sink, Peter? Because at that moment I lost my faith. I didn't totally believe in Jesus or what he was doing, but he showed me how. Greetings, Thaddeus. Oh, for such wonderful things to happen, Jesus must truly be the Son of God. But we haven't told you about one of the greatest miracles of all. James told about the time when Jesus heard some very bad news about his friend, Lazarus. Lazarus has died. Oh, how sad. We're sorry, Jesus. Don't be, my friends. He's dead, but I'm going to bring him back to life. When I do, it will help you to believe in me. 
They found Lazarus's sisters waiting in front of the burial tomb. Jesus? I'm sure Lazarus wouldn't have died if you had been there. Martha, anyone who believes in me will live again, even if he has died. Do you believe that? Yes, because I believe you are God's son. Then take away this stone. God, may everyone now see that you have sent me to give life. Lazarus, come out. Jesus must be the Son of God. Then Peter told the traveler about Jesus' most important, most wonderful miracle. It happened three days after his own death. It was on a Sunday when John and Peter went to where Jesus was buried. But he was gone. Jesus came back to life. He then visited his disciples. They first saw him down by the water. What are we supposed to do now? We should become fishermen again. What else can we do? The sea is completely empty. Yes, we fished all night and we haven't caught a thing. Hello! Have you caught any fish? Not even one! Try again. Uh, what are you saying? I don't understand. Throw your net over the right side of the boat. <laughs> hey, look! It's Jesus! Quick, let's row to shore! You go ahead, I can't wait. Good morning, Peter. Call to the others. Let's have fish for breakfast. In all, Jesus has been here with us for 40 days now, telling us about the kingdom of God. Oh, how wonderful. I only wish that I... Peter, there you are. Oh, hey, let's let's go. Go. Good, to yeah. Good to see you. I give you my blessings. And now it is time for me to return to heaven so I can be with my Father. Now go out into the world and teach everyone you meet about me. Remember, I'll always be with you through the Holy Spirit. We must leave now, my friend. I and the others are going to Jerusalem to begin our life's work, to tell others like yourself about Jesus. Remember everything that we've told you today and believe in the miracles of Jesus.
Long ago, word spread throughout the land of a wonderful teacher in Jerusalem. It was Jesus, the Son of God. He helped people who were sick. and encourage those who were lonely. He answered their questions and told them about God. Jesus traveled from place to place, and wherever he went, people wanted to hear what he had to say. <laughs> you know, the angels of children are always very close to God in heaven. my baby pray for my child no go away one of Jesus's disciples was upset can't you see Jesus is too busy to waste his time on children wait my father's kingdom is made up of people who trust and love like children do to God every child is a special treasure as my disciple you should know I could never turn children away I'm sorry, Jesus. Here. Please, come back. I was wrong. Jesus will bless your children. Jesus was never too busy for anyone, young or old, sick or well. <laughs> Teacher! If you really know all the answers, tell me. How can I get into heaven? You've studied God's law. What do you think? Well, it says to love God with all my heart and mind and strength. And I should love my neighbors and other people as much as I love myself. That's right. But wait, I understand everything but that last part. Who are my neighbors? And how do I love others? So, what's your answer, Jesus? There's the story of a young man. He left Jerusalem on a trip to Jericho. The young man checked his money carefully, as his father had always told him to. and then began his journey. Morning. Good morning. Along the way, the man greeted other travelers, including a priest from the temple. Have a safe journey. And you also. As his journey continued, he came upon another traveler. A Levite. Levites help the priests in the temple. <coughs> 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 
Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Good journey to you. And to you. As time passed, the traveler saw fewer and fewer people on the road. <laughs> so I'm not alone. What a beautiful bird. I remember seeing such a bird once. Oh, Papa! Can we look at the birds? <laughs> we always do, son. Oh, Papa, don't you just love the birds? Love the birds! Love the birds! Come on, your mother sent us to buy almonds for our dinner. They live down the street from us, don't they? Yes, they're our neighbors. They're good people. Papa, look! Who's that man? Him? He's not from Jerusalem. He's from Samaria. <gasps> That's a Samaritan? Stay here, son. The Samaritans are not like our neighbors. They are our enemies and can't be trusted. The boy was taught to fear anyone from a different place. Always remember, beware of the Samaritans. Beware of the Samaritans. The traveler was completely alone on the road when a stranger approached. He was frightened because his father had always warned him to be afraid of people from other places. But the foreigner did not bother him. <laughs> Greetings, little fellow. Here's a treat for you. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't see you. Good day, stranger. How are you? Hello. Are you from Jerusalem? Oh, that's a relief. It's good to see neighbors so far from home. Ow! You have a firm grip, friend. You haven't felt anything yet. <gasps> Grab him! W w what are you doing? Please stop! We're neighbors! So give us all your money, neighbor! <laughs> Let's get out of here! The thieves took the traveler's money and jewelry, and they almost took his life. Thank <laughs> you. 
Help me. Can somebody help me? But no one could hear his cries for help, so he tried to crawl back to the road. I know you'd help me if you could, little friend. The poor traveler lay in the ditch for hours. <clears throat> Someone's coming. How fortunate. It's the priest. He'll help me. But I'm so, so tired. The traveler needed help, but he was too weak to call out. Hmm. What's this? Someone should help this poor man. The priest passed the traveler on the opposite side of the road. Oh, the priest. <coughs> Where did he go? Please. Like the priest before him, the Levite passed on the other side of the road. What will I do? What will I do? Isn't there anyone who will help me? By late afternoon, the poor traveler had grown very weak. Hello, little friend. I'm afraid I, I won't make it through the night. Tell me, God, where are my neighbors now that I need them? At sunset, another traveler came down the road. Someone's coming. comes a Samaritan. Maybe he hasn't seen me. Who is it?
I'll be right back. He won't be back. This is medicine for your cuts and scrapes. Now, this should help. I don't understand. I'm going to take you to a safe place tonight. But why? You're a Samaritan. Ah, then you have met my people before. Travelers passing by couldn't believe their eyes. A Samaritan was helping an Israelite. Don't talk. Save your strength for our journey ahead. I hope this doesn't hurt too much. The Samaritan led his donkey to a small inn. Was there an accident? Is he all right? No, we must get him inside. Of course. That man, he's alive. Yes, I, s I saw him too. But who is that with him? Why, it's a Samaritan! But a Samaritan wouldn't help an Israelite, would he? Just rest now. All night, the Samaritan cared for the injured man. He's looking much better. I must travel on business today. Take this money and pay for anything he needs until I get back. When I return, I'll pay you for any other expenses. I can't thank you enough. I'll see you in a few days. I asked God where my neighbors were when I needed them. He has given me the answer. And the Samaritan did as he promised. A few days later, he took the traveler back to Jerusalem. Who is my neighbor? You are my neighbor, I can clearly see. That a neighbor is a friend reaching out to me. Who is my neighbor? You are my neighbor. Now we both agree that a neighbor is a friend helping friends in need. Look for a neighbor. He will be the one. Always stand. Standing by your side when the 
So tell me, which man was the neighbor to the traveler? The priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? Well, that's easy. The one who cared for him. As we should all do, showing kindness to everyone. So don't just love the people in your family or your friends. Love everybody, especially those in need. Live your life like the Good Samaritan. I will, Jesus. Let me help you, young neighbor. The story Jesus told that day spread throughout the world. And now, a person who helps someone in need is called a Good Samaritan. Many, many years ago in the land of Israel, the people were waiting for a very important event. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They heard the old story that one day God was going to send them a new king, a king who would protect them, bring them peace, and give the people more freedom. When is the new king going to come anyway? Our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents promised he would. They said he was coming. Yeah, but, but when? Even in King Herod's palace, people waited. 
Faster, faster! When will that new and better king get here? What was that? Nothing. No talking aloud. You will eat only bread and water for the next 30 days. No, 50 days. Old stale bread. And only four drops of water. No, make that three drops of water a day. What are you looking at? Then, one day in the town of Nazareth, a young woman named Mary had a most amazing visitor, an angel. <laughs> Who are you? Please don't be afraid, Mary. I am the angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? God has chosen you from all the women of the world to be the mother of his son. God has chosen me? How can this be? Everything is possible with God. You will have a son. He will be the son of God. And you will call the baby Jesus. Whatever God wants, I will do. Oh. Mary loved a man named Joseph. One night, an angel came to Joseph in his dream. Joseph, God has great and wonderful plans for you and Mary. Mary is going to have God's son. He will be God's promised king. Give him the name of Jesus and take good care of Mary and the baby king when he comes. Mary. My Mary. God sent an angel to tell me about the child. I love you, Mary. I love you too, Joseph. Soon after, Mary and Joseph were married. It was right about at this time that Augustus Caesar, the emperor of the whole Roman Empire, wanted to count the people who lived under his rule. 25, 26, 27. There are 692 people from the town of Hebron and 839 from the town of Jericho. Add it to the list. 28, 29, 30. I'm getting tired. Send servants out to count all the people in my land. Everyone was ordered to go to their hometown so they could be counted. Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem, the town where he was from. Bethlehem was very far away. Excuse me, Shepherd. Do you know how far Bethlehem is? It's a long trip, 70 miles from here. Don't worry, Mary. I won't. I feel very safe with you, Joseph. For you see, Mary was expecting the new baby to arrive soon. Thank you, Shepherd. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. By day, they traveled many miles. We're more than halfway there. I'm sure we'll be there in no time. Here, Mary. It's nice and cool. Thanks. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> At night, they slept in the open air. <laughs> ah. The next afternoon, they saw a sign. Bethlehem was only three miles away. We're almost there. Soon we'll be in a comfortable room at the inn. There were many travelers in Bethlehem that night. Where can I get a good meal? 
Where's the inn? Where's a good place to stay? Good evening, kind man. Can you tell us how to get to the inn? Of course. Why not take the shortcut? Just go around this corner, then up the steep hill. You'll pass the granary, then go right, then left, then two rights, then your second left, then let's see. Right, left, right, left, and you're there. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Excuse me, do you know where the inn is? Sure, it's right at the end of this street. It is? That's wonderful. Thank you, little girl. You're welcome. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. It was closer than we thought. We're here. Yes? Quit pushing. I'd like a room for my wife and myself. So would everyone. We have too many people here now. My husband keeps saying yes, yes, yes. Tonight, we'll have to sleep in the kitchen. But we've been traveling for days. What's going on here? They want a room. What else? Uh, I'm sorry. We really have no more space at all. My wife is very tired. We came from very far away. Yes, so have a lot of people. And my wife is expecting a baby. I'll tell you what I can do. We have a stable out back. It's full of animals, but at least you'll have a roof over your heads. It'll be warmer and safer than sleeping out in the open. Thank you. You're very kind. Come, I'll show you. You have some important company. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable here. It's the best I can do. Thank you. We're very grateful. Let's try and make the best of it. During that night, a most wonderful thing happened. The baby was born, God's little son. We'll call the baby Jesus. Jesus. Mary and Joseph loved their new baby boy very much. I must wrap him to keep him warm and comfortable. The ox's feeding box. Jesus can sleep in here. And so the baby Jesus lay in a manger, surrounded by the warmth of love and the protection of God, who was now ready to let all of heaven spread the news of the baby's birth. That night, just outside the town of Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. How can you let your sheep walk around all night? He should be sleeping. My sheep? That one is yours. You make him go to sleep. I'm not going to walk way over there. You take care of him. No, you. No, you. Look, it's no big deal. You just have to be nice to him, that's all. What do you mean? Just tell him to go to sleep. Hey, sheep! Go to sleep! Come over here, little guy. It's time to sleep. Come here, this way. Ooh. Greetings. Oh. 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 Ah. Oh. Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring good news of great joy. Tonight, a most wondrous thing has happened. Here in Bethlehem, the Son of God was born. 
He is Christ the Lord, the King that comes from God. His name is Jesus, and he is wrapped snugly in a manger. A manger? You can go see him right now. It is the happiest time of the world. Whoa! Wow. Ow! A king in a manger? Right here in Bethlehem? I always thought he'd be in a palace. Let's go into town and see what the angel's talking about. Uh, let's go into town and see what the angel is talking about. I just said that. Then let's go. Whoa! Whoa. This way. Hey, where are you going? Get back with the other sheep. Didn't I tell you to go back? Oh. All right, but you'd better behave. Sheep. The angel was right. Look. He's really there. Hello there. What brings you here? We came to see the baby sent from God. We know about him because an angel came and told us. Then many angels came and sang about God's glory and peace on earth. The angel said he'd be wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Just like this. It's true. What the angel said is true. The Son of God, the King in a manger. Mary's heart filled with wonder as the shepherds told their story. She knew that her newborn child was the Son of God. Meanwhile, in the far distant lands of the East, wise men who study the stars mm -hmm. saw something new in the sky. Oh. Mm. Oh, I beg your pardon. Not at all. It was entirely my fault. Uh, no, it was me, really. I wasn't looking where I was going. I was noticing that star. But so was I. What a coincidence. I was too. I study the stars. So do I. Uh, so do I. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. I am from the Far East. Ah, I am from the Near East. I am from the Mid East. Have you ever been to the furthest East? Yoo hoo! Wise men! Down here. <laughs> you fellas wouldn't by any chance happen to know where that big fat star came from. This was just what we were wondering. We've never seen that star before. It's a completely new star. Unless... Unless... The star is a sign from God. Of course. Oh, my. A sign, a sign from, God. from God? That has to be it. The star is a sign from God? <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see, it is said that a new and bright star would be seen in the sky when the new king is born. Really? But there it is, the new and bright star. It's also said that if we follow that star, it'll lead us to the new king. A new king! He's come at last! A star is a sign! So, are you going to follow it? Absolutely. Positively. Certainly. We're gonna follow that star As long as it takes No matter how far Guiding a song to the child, the chosen one. Starlight, star bright, glimmer of hope, glorious sight. Shine on, shine on, 
wise men and bring us the news. So the wise men traveled far from the east. They kept following the star, never taking their eyes off it, not knowing where it would lead them. Look, the star is over Israel. We should go to the king's palace in Jerusalem. The newborn king must be there. Please forgive me, Your Majesty. I am so sorry to wake you, but the most unusual thing has happened. Tell me what it is already. And it better be good or I'll have you locked up. Yes, of course, Your Majesty. It's just that there are wise men visiting from the East. Yes, yes, and? Well, they say they have come to see the King. So, send them in. <laughs> They say they've come to see the newborn king. What are they talking about? Do they think I was born yesterday? Perhaps they were thinking there was another king. Another king? Absurd. Ridiculous. How can there be another king? And if there is someone pretending to be a king, I want to know where he is. He'll be sorry, I'll tell you that. Yes, Your Majesty, of course, Your Majesty. But what shall I tell the wise men from the East? Tell them to get lost. No. On second thought, get my advisors and hurry. Advisors, advisors, get in here. Yes, your majesty? What do you know about this newborn king? Oh, has he been born? Has who been born? The king. I am the king. We mean the other one. <laughs> what other one? The one you speak of. The one I speak of? I don't know anything about any king except that everyone else seems to know about him. Why wasn't I told? Nobody tells me a thing. But we didn't know he was born yet. Who? The newborn king. <sighs> okay. If you're so smart, just where is this newborn king? The old stories say he will be born in Bethlehem. The stories say that, do they? That'll be all. Send these wise men in at once. Who told you to stop? Keep those fans going. And the rest of you, get back to work. Your Majesty, I present the wise men from the East. King Herod, we have come to meet the newborn king. 
And where did you hear of this king? We saw the star that God put in the sky. A star? From God? A beautiful star. A bright star. A sign from God. <laughs> we knew that if we followed the star, it would lead us to the new king. We want to worship him. This new king is not here. Then where is he? He's in Bethlehem. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you should go find him. Yes. See what I care. Go try and find him. And if you do find him, come and tell me where he is. I would like to worship the new king myself. Oh. Enough of that. When the wise men left the palace, they looked into the sky and saw the star once again. Look! There it is! On to Bethlehem! The wise men followed the star right into Bethlehem. Up this way! Come on, everyone! Come see the newborn king! And there, right above the manger, was the star. The wise men knew they had been guided to the right place. <gasps> We've traveled from distant lands to celebrate the newborn king. May we come in? Please. We knew the baby was born because of the star. We followed it all the way here. We have brought gifts. The wise men gave Jesus gold and sweet-smelling perfume and incense. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for letting us worship the king. We thank God for his great wisdom. He has sent us his son. <laughs> Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king! Praise be to God! Hooray for the new king! The wise men never did go back to King Herod to tell him the good news about baby Jesus. Everyone rejoiced and thanked God for sending them his son, the new king of the world. <laughs>